All right, we are recording and welcome everyone to the fourth Divine Feminine Roundtable as the clock strikes 1111 11 Eastern Time. We are joined today from, uh, I have to first honor our galactic friends because we've got the Pleiadians here, the Syrians here, the Arcturians here, Melchizedek, the Dolphin Realm. Mm -hmm. Now, who I'm missing, obviously, Source is here with us too. We're going to be talking today about contracts. If it's okay, the first thing, if you guys will bear with me for one minute, everybody that's listening as well, um, what we're going to do is we're going to reach up into our heart space. And if you would please join us all just for one minute, just one minute, so that we can connect with our heart space and have the intelligence of the heart sing through all of us gathered here on this video now and anyone who's gonna be listening to this in the future. So focus your attention on the area of your heart. Imagining the breath is flowing in and out of the heart space, breathing in a little slower and deeper than usual. And then make a sincere attempt to focus on gratitude, to feel gratitude for self and other and all on the planet. And come on back. Thank you. Mm. So I'm going to do a little prayer just to sort of set the energy. Let the word God mean whatever it means for you. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the spirit of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And silently set the intention that you're only open and receptive to those energies and that information that is for your highest good and in the perfect amounts needed for your healing and evolution at this time. Word, I am word. <clears throat> All right. So we're talking about contracts today, which seems really, really relevant because what's been happening in my world, I got really angry on Tuesday this week because they closed my CrossFit gym, something really simple, but they won't let me work out. I get mad because I can buy weed and liquor, but I can't work out. I can buy paint and lights, but I can't go to my gym to work through the energy and have my sane, you know, the way that I express energy. And at the same time, I've seen just about enough of human beings beating on each other and kicking each other. And I'm like, what are you doing to each other? Why are we hurting each other like this? And then at the same time, my heart sings through all of this noise and reminds me, you know, forgive them, Lord. They know not what they do. And I've never read the Bible, so it's not coming from a religious point of view. And that ties into the mind control that Laura has been talking about and why Araya is joining us today. So if it's okay with you ladies, we're gonna start with what Araya um, has been woken up in the middle of the night by her guides to provide this information. And then hopefully we can share this with the collective um, and um, claim back the sovereignty for those that it's been taken from by violating their free will. And because we know who we are, we can claim the light that's within their own beings on their behalf. So I'm gonna hand it over to Araya to share, and then uh, let's see how our conversation blossoms from there. Wonderful, thank you so much for having me, everyone. I can't even believe that I'm here right now. <laughs> this is just amazing and incredible. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a long intro about, about that because we are definitely all here divinely brought together because how I even met Paula is just 
incredible. I was just following Magenta and Laura a couple months ago. I didn't even know, you know, I didn't, I had known you guys and I started following guys and I resonated with what you were posting. And so, you know, and I've been looking at your um, profiles and things. And then a couple months later, Paula gives me a call from a referral and, and tells me she's connected to this divine goddess table. And I, I almost fell off my chair. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so, you know, um, I think we've all been brought together and, and, and there's something beautiful happening today. Um, the other thing that I wanted to share is I actually think I had a dream about all of you. Um, I didn't realize it until last night uh, when all this remote viewing stuff started happening a couple months ago, because normally I just do one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, but a, a couple months ago or three months ago, actually, I had a dream and I said, how, how can I help? with what's happening right now and the dream was me dancing with these women and we were all singing god bless america now i know there's stuff going around all over the world but obviously i'm here in america i'm in san diego so the and there's a lot of stuff going on here you know centered here too so i realized last night this was the women i was dancing with were you <laughs> and i think it has to do with you know what we're doing to help protect transform and heal and um and, and bring things to light and we all have our own we all have a piece and so i know what i'm reading today is just one small piece of the puzzle and so you know i'm not i'm not the leader i'm just sharing um what i was given so thank you for letting me do that today i also pulled a card for us today and it talks about wisdom and one of the key things i see in this card it says ignorance is our planet's biggest enemy because this this is essentially about mind control this this is essentially about us revealing the things that either are unbearable to look at or that people can't possibly uh, they don't know where to look or they can't possibly fathom it's happening or um, you know just dismantling the unconscious things that have been happening with, with nanotechnology and things like that that are actually creating um, mind control tactics that are against our free will. So, so that's why I'm here today to, to help with that. Um, before I get into all the things that I was shared in the remote viewing, I do wanna just say one, one positive thing, uplifting thing. This text came in right before we started from a friend and I thought it was really relevant. And it says, I have an overarching trust and understanding that our current world situation is a fabulous opportunity for a paradigm shift that serves the highest good. So I just want to say that because I, you know, I know there's a lot of things that are really painful and challenging going on, but I also want to like always bring hope, hope in that you know this is all happening for a reason, and we are we are transcending something beautiful. And I know you guys all know that, and I'm just sharing that as my intent of everything behind everything. So about. Three months ago, like I said, I never really was a remote year. I just did one-on-one -on -one sessions with people uh, as a healer, a Pleiadian light worker. And I just, I started getting awoken in the middle of the night. And I had heard from a uh, David Wilcock post presentation that a lot of times these groups meet in all, in all time zones between one and four in the morning that are kind of doing some of these agendas that we're not necessarily interested in. And so I started waking up between these times and I would be thrusted out of sleep and literally be projected into realities of these darker groups. And I would be projected into their rituals, which was very disturbing. You know, first it was the, some of the child stuff. Um, and then it was some of the rituals that they're doing around uh, their intention on this planet. And so one of the main two ones that I was brought into was I woke up and I literally, I heard, I saw, like, you know, it sounds crazy. I'm going to say Gil Bates. I saw Gil Bates and I saw a group behind him and he was participating in the ritual. And I heard uh, them say, we don't want you here. And it wasn't just me. It's like people holding the light, people that are trying to dismantle this agenda. And, um, and then another time I was woken up, and, and this is the one where I got the, the, the contracts and the nanotechnology dismantling technique that we're gonna, that hopefully we'll get to share today. Um, I heard, you are our slaves. And, I, and that's when I started tuning in. What, what are they doing? And what, I was, what was revealed to me 
is that th this whole nanotechnology that has been being inhaled through the air, through vaccines since the 90s, um, without our even knowing, is part of that enslavement plan that they want to uh, perpetrate. And how they're getting to do this is through loopholes, because obviously, if you ask anybody if they want this, they, most people would be like, absolutely not. But they're going through these loopholes that um, kind of people aren't aware of. And how do we, you know, we're agreeing to them on some level because A, either we're not aware of them or B, in the astral plane, sometimes uh, I see with a lot of my clients, sometimes we agree to things because we're afraid, you know, you'll, we think we don't have a choice. Loopholes have to do with um, creating people into synthetic beings. So if we're synthetic beings, we're no longer, they think, we're no longer sovereign because we're a thing now. We're not a sovereign being. And so how I, I, and I responded when I was in that remote viewing, I kind of interjected. I said, no, we, we're still sovereign. We still, we still have a soul. It doesn't matter if um, you turn us, try to turn us into synthetic beings. We still have a soul and we're sovereign. And that's not, that's not going to fly. Um, but we do need to disconnect some of the energy. And so immediately what happened was suddenly I saw 144,000 souls appeared and in this vision that I was in. And I was shown, and then Sanat Kamara was there, all the goddesses that are here were there, and I was shown the things that we need to cancel. We, we began to cancel these contracts together and cut the cords from any of the souls that either weren't conscious of it and wanted it cut, or that were coming in their astral body and wanted these uh, cords cut. So we canceled these contracts, we cut them, and then I was shown using one of the Pleiadian tools, how to dismantle the nanotechnology and how we do it on the etheric level. Because even though it's in our physical bodies, we can make it null and void by dismantling it from the etheric. And then it's like, it doesn't matter if we're inhaling it. So I, um, I want, you know, so I'm going to just open it for a second if anybody wants to say anything. Um, and then, then maybe we can go into some of the contracts and the, the dismantling of the nanotechnology with everyone who's going to be watching this. If you guys want to do that, I'm, I'm open to whatever. So that's a piece of my story. Hi. Um, yeah, I'd like to, to say something. Um, I'm, some of you I know and, and some of you I don't but so so some of you will know me and some of you won't but I'm on the channel for the Pleiadians and recently um when, when well going back to when first Trump when when Trump first came in um I thought I, I actually thought the guy was an idiot um and over the last few months um I've really well today I've really changed from not today but I'm you know, since since he came into to power, um, and my thinking was that he was a complete idiot. I've actually completely changed my mind because of my own experiences. Now I know Magenta has had this as well, and I think Jen has had it as well. But um, I had a dream. Um, I think it was last week or sometime, um, and I dreamt of, and it was a real dream, um, and I dreamt of Trump, and I dreamt of Vladimir. Um, and I was un and, and this is similar to Magenta's dream as well, but um, I was I was underground in a bunker or, or I guess you would call it a bunker um, and he was showing me something he was giving me something but there was there was light coming from his hands there was light emitting from his his being and there was like a force or an energy coming from his from his from his hands and he was showing me something and then the next thing I knew I was in Russia. And I was underground in Russia and I was talking to Vladimir um, and I, I can't remember exactly what he said now. I did write it down, but um, I know that the two are working together. And I do believe now that, that Trump is actually connect, connected to and working with Pleiadian energy. Um, but I think he's working with other light forces as well and light beings. And so I just wanted to say that. Um, and, and also he was saying to me that um, 
the way we change things and I knew this already but he was was kind of explaining it a bit more in depth that the way we change things is by raising our frequency raising our vibration um, and that's how we change things so I just wanted to add that I'll, I'll just stop there because I could go on forever I hope you all heard that <laughs> okay great Laura, you, you, you did an interview with a gentleman today. And I think this might be a good segue perhaps to you to add. I don't remember the name of the gentleman, but I think I caught it on Facebook Live maybe on Thursday or Wednesday evening. And I, I think I heard either you, yourself or the gentleman, and I could have got it wrong, talking about how if people are not conscious and if they are ruled by their emotions, they can be remotely controlled by this nanotech. Did I hear that right or do you want to... I don't know. I, I've, di I've done a few things uh, with two different <clears throat> people. I can't keep my days apart, but yeah, I mean, it's important to feel. It's important to like feel things, to heal things and be in touch with our emotions and our intuition and our nurturing feminine qualities. But I think the reaction to triggers and traumas that keep us in a loop that allow these things to hook into us, that gives us a false sense of uh, like, being just real strong and uh, in, in a movement that is actually, you know, connected to ritualistic black magic type stuff, um, there's a big difference. And so AI can entrain and begin to mimic these lower energies that are connected to more of a lower mind reaction than a very clear and intuitive um, reaction that would come from a, a, a more clear emotional body that's connected to the crystalline clear waters of creation that um, are, are, don't have to give up the emotions. So there's a fine line between negating emotions and, you know, knowing the difference between the lower sort of levels of it and, and, you know, the higher levels of it that we need in these times. So it's just like the mental body. When we're in the lower mind, it's very easy to hook into um, whatever information is being thrown our way. Um, and that's why people are buying into what they see in the news and then they have the emotional reaction, but they're, they're not coming from being able to see through the lies, being a neutral observer, being in the higher mind and then finding an emotion of compassion or concern that would allow them to take on the kind of role that I think all of us are choosing to take. But yeah, AI can definitely, it, it infiltrates, you know, the, 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 the lower self because it's not integrated with the higher this lack of integration of polarity makes us incredibly vulnerable and if we're only hanging in the lower chakra something else is going to um actually take over the parts of ourselves that we haven't read life into i mean if we have junk dna and dormant dna and shut down galactic chakras and we're only functioning in these lower areas you know they're scrambling all this other stuff and making it very hard to connect and that's where the ai um, can really, you know, get the best of a person. So when we switch the rest on, we can embrace the dark night of the soul and be in our emotions and maybe grieve over some of this without it making us susceptible to AI because we're in a direct link with the divine. We're not linked into the neural net of mind control and this, this, these, these negative reversal grids. And so all the symbolism and magenta, your last post was, you know, we've all been talking about like the black cube and the ritualistic part of what's going on right now. And, and people have no idea like they, they're they're feeling so proud of like what they're standing for they have no idea what they're doing and it's really heartbreaking in a lot of ways and it's so early my end i mean it's not that early so it's sort of that i haven't quite processed like the reality it's like every morning it's like okay all right here we go so it's so wonderful to have my morning start with all of you but um yeah that's that's what i'm really concerned about is uh this consent um to something that if they knew what they were consenting to, they wouldn't be, you know, doing it. And, and the level of belittling and insults and people that I'm so surprised are being hooked right into it, you know, being in that lower reactive state of, if you don't agree with me, I'm going to belittle you and put you down. And just all this, uh, you know, silence is violence. And if you don't stand for it, then you're part of the problem and you're spiritual bypassing. It's just like, oh my gosh, make this stop. Like, what is our priority right now is to come together and support this, you know, administration. And, and, and I'm not bent on trying to convince people to do that because that just creates problems. But I certainly don't feel like attacking or belittling anybody. And it's just, it's a, it's a really ugly and low vibe and absolutely makes a person vulnerable to AI.
it's part of the AI because it's already connected to archons. It's already, it's already bought into the, the parasite. So the parasite then feeds into the tech part of it. And then it slowly modifies the physical vessel into yes, the synthetic. So we got to be the override frequency and these numbers have to grow. I mean, I'm feeling pretty confident about it, but I'm kind of up and down a little bit about, cause I'm just really surprised what I'm seeing on social media with people that I, I, I would think would be able to kind of see through this, but. Go ahead, Patricia, you had your hand up. Me? Did you call on me? Okay. Thank you for that, Laura. We, we really are in sync in so many ways. I'm sure we all are. And I, I just wanted to mention that uh, I've been recently speaking, just, just recently did a, a podcast about how we seem to be forgetting that we do, in fact, have this incredible auric sheath. And it's like, you know, sort of like spirituality 101a back in the day we really really embraced the idea of, of the auric field and how to replenish and amplify the field and so when you think about how this field is many layers the mental body the spirit body the emotional body and down to the physical what, what i'm also seeing here i personally believe that nothing can touch me and i my question that i posed the other day on on uh, my podcast was how is it that some of us are crystal clear that even though this machinery is operative, these nanoparticles are falling all over the joint. Why is it that some of us are crystal clear, we're not touched by it, and others are devastatingly giving away their power to it? And for many reasons that we all understand, but one of them is they have no auric protection. They're just, if you really look at these people, if you have the psychic vision, you can see these people are just completely compressed in their auric field because and back in the day my first channeled work for the syrians they said when these energies shift you better have your miasms cleared because if you don't you're going to blow fuses all over the joint you've got to have this bioelectric <laughs> mechanism cleared flowing energy or you're going to blow your fuses and so when i look at these people because the <laughs> You know, like Laura and I have kind of been back and forth on uh, social media. It's just like amazing to be that these people, you know, bless them. But come on already. When are you going to understand that being in this absolute rage and negation is about you, not me? And at any rate, um, I think it's really important to help people to, to focus on this field of energy again, to remember that once you're, you're shattered, your shield is shattered. And of course, there are so many reasons for that. That's how this stuff gets in. I think it's my obligation, at least as, a, as whatever I'm doing out here, to help people uh, work on that and to really understand how, how vital it is to be shielding themselves in prayer, in meditation, in healing sessions, in groups, and every single day, every single moment, to shield yourself against the physicality of what's being rained on us, but most importantly, to amplify this shield so that it just can't get into the emotional body. And I personally believe we're capable of that. Okay, there's three, three hands up. Let's go to Nina, and then Carrie, and then Tara. Thanks. <laughs> I uh, just resonate so much with all of you. And I just want to say I'm so happy to, to be here with all these beautiful female divine feminine reflections and, and galactic faces. It's such a gift. Um, so I was actually going to tell Laura specifically, but it, it's so pertinent to what's happening right now. I had a dream this weekend and I was in the tombs in Egypt underneath the ground. And Laura, I remember you there. But I'm sure, and there were other women there, I don't remember everyone, but it was just this extreme divine feminine presence. And there were hieroglyphics all around us. And what they were were star codes and key codes to activate the breaking and dismantling of these altars. And so later that day, the Pleiadians came through and they started decoding this dream to me. And so I sing and I speak in star language and light language. And uh, I'm like a classical opera singer, so I have these very high frequencies I can go to. The message they've been giving me is, 
It's so important that everyone around the world is opening their voices because even if you're not singing or speaking in light language or light codes, this is your natural frequency, which is the unique expression of your heart song. And it actually raises your frequency. It cuts through the AI programming because it is divine frequency, which is always more powerful than any type of false creation. So that's been, I just had this vision of everyone around the world and all of the star seeds, all of the angelics that are global right now that are awoken, going out and singing, singing in nature, singing in their own bodies. And what I have experienced in a lot of my sessions with these activations and the light language is it actually exposes demons, it breaks altars, it cuts chains. So when we work on a frequency level, we're working with quantum energy. And that just pierces that light. Your voice is really a stargate and it really contains so much light and radiance that just breaks through all of that darkness. So that's something that I've been really called to bring forth at this time more than ever. And I felt like it was, it's very much a piece of all of this. Hi everybody. For those who I haven't met yet, my name is Kerry and it's just so special to be in this group of amazingly powerful, heart-based, real and authentic women. And I know that the ones who listen to this broadcast will be so moved within themselves, male and female, to have that divine feminine activated and anchored within them. And something that I want to speak of is, I know Laura's done the most brilliantly beautiful YouTube on consent. Um, and if anybody hasn't watched it, you absolutely have to, because it was one of the most real, most moving, authentic moments I have been privileged to witness. And what it was and why it was so powerful is because we witnessed somebody expressing righteous anger. And I think what we're seeing right now globally is we're seeing anger that has not been owned or transmuted or worked through by the individual. So it's unconscious anger, which can only be lashed out at another person. We're supposed to get triggered as conscious beings and as spiritual beings. Many people walk around with a misconception that they're supposed to be more perfect than they are, or they're never supposed to get angry. And if we welcome a trigger and allow ourselves to connect with our anger, like for example, when Aria said earlier, oh, they see us as slaves. And I know that that's true. That should move every single one of us to go, what? How dare they? And in that moment, there's a righteousness in your anger. There's a righteous anger. And anger is the most powerful, potent force, because if any of you have ever taken the time to feel it, not suppress it, not lash it out, but just let it be there, it moves you to action. And it clears, it's a clearing energy. And once you allow that righteous anger that you've claimed, that you've owned, that you've allowed to surge and course through your body so that it can be transmuted and released, it will move you into a divine justified righteous anger followed by the most welcome most blissful relief that we could possibly imagine suppressed which so many people have been suppressed so when we awaken from the quiet when we awaken from the suppression welcome those moments and welcome where they move you to so that you can truly be an instrument of change so that you can find the parts of you that are capable of saying wait a minute i don't consent to this wait a minute this isn't okay with me anymore i think there's something incredibly powerful in our ability to acknowledge what's right in front of us 
to allow it to surge through the body, to shift that into acceptance, and we have then activated the divine feminine and the divine power inside each one of us. So I really wanted to share that because I know that we're dealing with contracts today. And as anybody considers, oh, wait a minute, I, I've been contracted to be silent. I've been contracted to be complicit to my own enslavement. When we realize that, we get to break those contracts through the moment of non-consent. And I know we're going to do much more work on them as we continue this conversation, but the moment of non-consent and the moment of righteous anger, I encourage every single person to find it within themselves. Thank you. My goodness, this is so powerful, sisters. Everything you're all saying, it's like listening to the multifaceted wisdom of the goddess. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, I was just going to bring that into remembrance as well for everybody that's hearing this. When you talk about contracts, Soraya, that we have all made contracts. We've all made contracts to be in this soul, in this body at this time. And of course, like you were just saying, Kerry, contracts are a two-way thing. And I think that really gets forgotten because people feel victimized. And then they feel, you know, rightful that they can blame somebody else for their emotions because it wasn't them, somebody did it to them. And right now I'm just seeing fingers being pointed everywhere. One minute is that person's fault. The next minute is somebody else's fault. And then it's this group of people's fault and that group of people's. And it's just labels and accusations and blame and, and, and emotions and unconsciousness just flying everywhere. And like you, Laura, had a few days this week of just being like, flipping heck, what is, what? Why aren't they not seeing you? <laughs> oh my goodness. And then just coming back into myself and being right. So what's my deal? What's my choice? And I just want to remind us, and I know we know this, but we can't hear it enough times, that every single human being on this planet has choice. If we've made a contract and we don't remember making it, we have a choice now to break that contract. And it does mean getting conscious of all the things that we've unconsciously done. Like you said, Araya, ignorance. In our ignorance, in our naivety, in our innocence, whichever one of those it is, you know, I didn't do it, I couldn't help it, whatever, the contract has been made because nothing gets done to us that we haven't agreed to. It is a two-way thing. Nothing can get triggered inside, you know, if somebody, something external happens in the world, which <laughs> it really seriously is, and we're getting triggered, that's our trigger. And that's the focus of our attention. And it's really important, I think, for just every single person to remember that to put the energy away from ourselves, misdirected attention, is to continue the enslavement, is to continue the victimhood. It doesn't change anything. Even if you say, on the outside, I'm going to protest and I want change and I want to use my free will because I want something else to happen. And we're directing that free will outside of ourselves. I think it's so much more powerful because I've seen that happen many times throughout history and well, not much changes. All the protesting, all the sacrifices, all of the blaming, all of the, you know, hangings and tarings and, you know, whatever, dethronings, it doesn't change much. And it's for actually to understand that those triggers are within us. Those triggers are our unconsciousness, where we've given our power away. We gave it away. And people can only take from us what we are willing to give away, whether it's through AI or mind control or frequency attack or whatever it is. We are only susceptible, we are only vulnerable if we are continuing to not put our consciousness and our choice for transformation and change back towards ourselves and to within to those parts of us that are being triggered because they want to awaken 
and it's just i think it's just really important for people to remember we all have a contract and to put it in real simple terms i think the choice is simple it's to be in fear and to be disempowered and to be in love and to be empowered and i mean to be in the unconditional source frequency the god frequency of love that highest vibration of love and we can just simply make a choice and we can choose how we react to everything and tap into our own soul contracts and that's what's kept my focus this week is i know why i'm here and yes it's distracting or it can be really distracting what's going on in the world but what's my choice why am i here what's my contract and my contract is to help come in and help break the contracts <laughs> that are enslaving humanity and hence sitting here with all of you and um, and i'm super super grateful that this is happening I think it was Chrissy I said to a few months back, I really feel that we need to do a deep going into the darkness, going into the shadows, going into those places that maybe people, a lot of people or most people aren't familiar with or don't know the terrain or haven't done it before or would be scared. For those of us that don't have that fear, that know how to do it, to come together and to go there together. And now, now it's actually happening and now we've come together. And I, and I just feel like this is, most divinely ordained really it's our souls contracts remembering one another and and if this is happening for us little small group here we can guarantee that our brothers and sisters you can feel it right in the blueprint in that divine awakening blueprint that's been set that we're all responding to in our codes our dna codes that there are many others coming together doing this as well and so it's not just us, you know, that we are all doing this together on many, many different levels and many different uh, dimensional frequencies. So it's just super, it's just brilliant. And I love you all. Thank you. Mary Catherine, please. Oh. Hi, everybody. Thank you for that, Tara and, and ladies, and so many new faces. Beautiful to, to see you all again, it feels like, even though it's the first time. Um, kind of what sparked very strongly when I'm, I'm hearing each of us speak as well is in holding these kind of spaces, and even as, as way showers, coaches, light workers, whatever names we're giving or we have been given, um, once we as decoders, if you want to call it that, as in we're decoding the DNA, we're decoding the AI, we're decoding the contracts. And we, as we do that, and as each person experiences that or sees us in the doingness of that, they also become sovereign in that too. And that was one of the things that was shown to me that once it's like, it's like the children, how they learn, and once they look at, you know, mommy, daddy, learn, they're, they're suddenly able to do it. And it's like this beautiful ripple effect from those that are coming into consciousness now, seeing each of us in this way or seeing um, one, it's like a ripple spark off. Um, so I, I just love that we're here doing this and I love the reach that this potentially has and that everybody that watches this and receives this contract decoding, um, essentially they can go on and do that with their families. They can go and do that with their children, their children, they can go and do it with their friends and so on and so forth because it's in the fields of resonance after that. So I love that. It makes me very, very happy. And thank you for inviting me to this beautiful space. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. I'm also really excited about this. Um, really nice to see Jenny as well here because um, we were in a session in back in January at your house and do you remember that that we were talking about the shit's gonna hit the fan that was so interesting we just we totally and I remember saying to the group like just buckle up because the shit's about to hit the fan and and it did um, but what um, I've been looking into in the last few days is um, the collective contract that we made and the way it was being shown to me was like a wheel. And it's like this massive wheel that's normally in motion, goes into a particular direction, which is like a fractal natural direction out of which creation occurs. And what was shown to me is that the contract we made collectively, for whatever reason, 
was to start reversing this wheel. And as a result of the reversal of the wheel, everything started going against the grain. And so then I also was shown why we had all these psychopaths in power and why people that are complete psychos were celebrated as heroes and people that were doing the most amazing work were like the paupers, poor people, you know, not nobody caring about it. Um, and what I was being shown then is, is that this wheel has now basically stopped. It, it's, it's not going into the opposite direction, but it's kind of sort of making up its mind on what it's going to do. And I'm personally very excited because I know that wheel is going to go back into the natural um, flow. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm very excited about that. And I'm also seeing really clearly how we are not the victims of this, that this was a really amazing way for us to really experience in the flesh. And I think maybe on some level, we may feel that it's gone a little too far because the suffering has been really, really, really extreme. Um, but it, I do really feel that it's, it's really coming to an end now and we're seeing the last bits of that being, being played out right now. And um, in a recent channeling of Bashar, um, it, it was said as well, just right now, stay in the eye of the storm. And so that's really interesting. Once you're in the eye of the storm, you know it's very easy to get caught up in that storm, unless you're really aware of staying in the eye of the storm. And there's a real fine line, you know, between the eye of the storm and getting caught up into it and, and buying into that duality that's playing out right now. Um, and at this very moment, it's the racial duality um, that's happening. But what I'm seeing, um, I generally don't tend to see things in 3D. I, I just see what I'm observing in front of me. And what I'm seeing is one big, huge ritual being played out. And um, I think it was Laura who said it earlier that it's actually really quite sad. I actually feel a sad feeling when I see it, when I see these people kneeling on the ground. I'm just thinking, wow, these are innocent souls and it's out of ignorance that, you know, and I think it's in a way, it's, of course, it's great that we're standing up for people's rights. I'm always for that, of course, but because I can't see it just on the outer layer and I always have to see the layer behind what's going on, I find it really, really, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's pretty upsetting to see the rich, the massive ritual being played out. Um, yeah, that's what I wanted to share with you. Thank you. Go ahead, Magenta. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that the very first message that came through from the nine for me that was a longer message, a monadic message, more than just the videos I was uploading, uh, that became the first book, was all about contracts, the entire monadic structure uh, that became my first book, Masters of the Matrix. And I've asked the nine since why that was the first information that they came through with that was a larger information than the videos. You know, why was that the first book, if you will, the, the monadic structure, the first monad I was given? And they said, because it's the foundation of everything and you can't go forward in all the other spiritual disciplines without the understanding of the contracts. And that kind of goes to what Patricia was saying about it being the shield, the, 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 um, the matrix, the auric field, that is where the contracts are. And they come in as a coded form and we carry them with us. And if we don't understand that, if, if we believe a contract is something we made in the past before we were born, which we did, but if we always see it as something we made in the past and it's now stuck with us, then we can't move forward into changing that because the way to change it is to understand that the past, the present and the future are all one. So we can change the contract from the here and now the zero point. We do not have to wait to leave this body and then go back into a life between lives and be born again and make a new contract. We can change the contract here and now, both individually and collectively. So I feel that that's why so many light workers and star seeds are picking this up right now, because the contract was originally simply um, 
a coded formation for your journey of life. All the experiences that you needed, everything that you needed to learn in order to grow as a soul. The contracts are organic and normal and are supposed to be there because they're everything that we are. And that is what was hijacked. Those contracts were hijacked physically, psychologically, spiritually, and predominantly emotionally because that is the link to the contracts. So they were hijacked and new contracts were put into place with these individuals who, and it's happening now, as um, Laura has said, as Chrissy has said, we're in the middle of a mass ritual, people posting black, black boxes on their profiles and people doing mass knee kneeling and everything else that's going on. They're creating more contracts and that goes to um, Araya's uh, remote viewing where they're saying you are slaves that's what they're continuing that's what they're perpetuating so we come to a, pl a place where we realize that we have mastery over this we do not have to um, move into these rituals but if we don't understand what the rituals are and we don't understand what the contracts are then we can't move into that place of mastery because we don't know we're being enslaved and that's the whole great awakening we are now learning that we have been enslaved for many 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 years and we are now learning to come to the place where we make that declaration of sovereignty as Laura did so beautifully um, you know three weeks or so ago that's all part of breaking the contract and it all comes down to integrated emotion and understanding that our emotions feed the contracts. Fear keeps the dark contracts alive. They become a program within us. Those programs within us then become six dimensional geometrics, pre-matter structures, and they continually manifest. So we're always feeding into this negative loop fear, anger, frustration, jealousy, with no integration, going continuously into that matrix field and continuously manifesting a reality that matches that. It's only when we realize that we have the power to break that and we come into sovereignty and we then move into compassion and um, everything that the hijacking has been doing, the hijacking has been hijacking people who want equality. They want fairness. They want to see people with different skin colors treated equally and with honor. That's the intention that those people have. And that intention is hijacked. And we, the star seeds, are the ones, the light workers and anyone else who understands this work, regardless of what name they might give themselves, we are the ones that are able to do that. And when we come together in this way, in this powerful way, especially when there's 13 of us, because 13 is a very powerful ritualistic um, program in and of itself. I think we need to realize that some of these contracts that we come in with, we still need them. They're there for us because they are our organic contracts that we need to go forward with. For example, the twin flame contract, the contract with the connection with the higher dimensions, the contract to awaken, the contract that is the God contract. But what we don't want is this victim, savior mentality, this slavery mentality, the acquiescence to this dark power, and this whole situation that's occurring now on our planet right now, these dark individuals, in order to continue with their dark plan, they've had to come in and show themselves. I mean, not, we're not literally seeing each and every one of them, but we are seeing their presence now more than we ever have. And they're playing a dangerous game because in order to do what they want to do, they have to come out of the shadows. And when they come out of the shadows, they're being seen. And they're being seen by, on a daily basis by multiple individuals who were asleep three months ago. My most recent dream, um, I was asking what, and I've just done a, a video about this, what is the antidote to this dark plan? And I was given in this dream an umbrella. And this goes back to what Patricia was saying about the shield. You open the umbrella, it shields you, it's a canopy, it's a matrix, it's a Merkaba. That's where the power is. The power is within that energetic matrix, which is the entire contract system. 
which is quantum and multidimensional. And so that's why the nine came forward with that as the very first foundation to any teaching, because if you want to go forward into enlightenment and ascension, you have to understand the contract system. If you still have those contracts in your system and you're not aware of them, then you're always going to be um, open to hijacking. But the minute you release those contracts and you come into your own power, you're in the eye of the storm. As Chrissy was saying, that's what the contract is. The contract system, the, the matrix is a vortex and you're in the center of the vortex. You're in the eye of the storm all the time. So while you see what's going on around you, and yes, you may feel emotion and integrate it. You are not going to be caught up in this forever. Oh my goodness, I can't stand this. I can't take any more. I'm so depressed. I'm so angry. I'm so furious. And you're waking up day after day after day after day with these dark emotions in you that are never integrated, continuously reinforcing those negative contracts. In the eye of the storm, we see what's happening. We're not immune from those emotions, but we are able to see a much greater picture and we are able to work in different realities. And we don't necessarily react to the outer reality. We see the outer reality, but we control our reactions and we react to the inner reality, which is of our own making. And that is the matrix and that's where the contracts are. So thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, Patricia. Thank you. That really resonates with me big time, Magenta. I just wanted to make a quick addition to that. And that is that it's also very important to remember that most of us, many of us here are working with DNA. I certainly have been doing this work for 20 years. And to remember that the DNA codes are also in the auric field. We are not this body. We are not uh, the bioelectromagnetic unit of itself. And so we're speaking all the time about the oneness, the all, forgetting that emanating out of this unit is the subatomic information that uh, carries the contracts and can be dealt with within this protective shield. Well, I'm seeing a lot of people who have no clue at all that what it is. It, it, it's shocking to me that we've lost sight of working on the, uh, the chakras, the shield. We've gotten a little bit more mental and heady, and um, especially with all of the galactic information coming in. We forget those basic aspects of being in human form. And I would just like to bring that to our attention that remember that in the reprogramming, the restructuring uh, of the DNA with all the sacred geometries, that this is, this is the sheath, this is the field. We can deal with whatever's coming in at that distance because I don't believe it can come in to my shield. I really don't. So far, not wood. Uh, as, and I was saying this earlier, and, and I've been talking to people about this. How is it that some people are compressed in this anger, rage, fear nonstop, and others are able to hold it out here, which beautifully described as being in the eye of the storm, knowing, seeing, aware, but somehow it does not traverse whatever that field is that you, you project out. And to me, it's all the subatomic information of all that exists. It's my DNA blueprint. It's all the contracts I came in with. And absolutely, this is where you change those contracts. Because if you understand you have a contract before you come into body, but then there's this beautiful free will zone called life, physical life, that you traverse for how many years before you go on out to your next destination. And so we have that field to play in and that means we have the freedom to change those essential contracts. And uh, if not, we're not free will buildings. And I don't, being sorry, and I for, not for a moment ever believe that I'm a slave. It's not gonna happen. And if that means standing up to somebody sticking a gun in my face, or if they, nail, if they, have, they try to nail me down to stick a needle in my arm, uh, I'm out of here. It's really, boiled down to that. When you really talk about slavery or freedom, those are decisions we might just have to confront. So I have a plan, which is I live on an island full of dolphins out there. And if that comes to be, 
where the insanity, I don't believe the no-win scenario, but should the insanity get to that point, um, I feel that I can break whatever c contracts I've made and just simply go swim away in the dollars. I will not allow my sovereignty for a moment to be imposed on. To the point that here we also have the masks, although people here are pretty mellow, but we still have the, dr the draconian imprint here because we're in part of the EU, EU. And I walk around with the mask to here only when I have to go to the grocery store, it's the only place I wear it. And I put it down here and I walk in and they glare at me, but I'm not cutting off the oxygen, baby. I am not cutting off the prana. This is another aspect of what's happening to people. They're getting no air, they're getting no prana. So how are you gonna have any kind of a shield when there's no pranic energy in your shield? So I walk up, if I have to wear that little thing and I have an attitude about it and it shows, uh, it's to here, I get in, I get out, and if they look at me, it's just a big smile. I will not yield to slavery. I will not accept omnipotence. I don't care if it's AI or reptiles or government or nut jobs. It cannot touch me. And when we, I'm getting emotional, we powerful women, we star seed, we light workers, we warriors project that out into that shield of altered DNA as lighthouses for the world or whoever. Our world could be two people, it could be who knows how many. Then we're doing, if you want to talk about a contract, I honor that contract. I'm going to come to you in a second, Carol, and then Araya. So I just wanted to share uh, really quickly when I had that experience early this week of righteous anger and at the same time, you know, for, forgive them, Lord, they don't, because it seems like people have forgotten to think for themselves. Like they're not actually thinking, okay, hang on a second here. What's going on? I, I, I think I've heard continually people right now are waking up in great confusion. So what I've noticed in my world, it's so important to create peace uh, in every moment. Cause I like stepped out my front door and it was beautiful and sunny and I had the birds and you would never think that there's a riot going on anywhere in the world in my little reality. And so what I'm finding for me is just creating so much peace, taking those walks in nature, playing beautiful music, chanting, chanting and singing and and staying in the heart space to your point what a great way to, to stay in the eye of the storm because in, in the middle of that you can see clearly and you can feel clearly and that's where the heaven is right we know that we have to walk through this we have to slow walk the public to uh you've got people in place in power that are psychos that do not have your interest in, in at, at heart we have to slow walk them from that point to the really, really dark stuff, the satanic stuff, right? And the off-planet stuff, the slavery stuff. So we've got to get them there quickly. And it feels to me like it's, it, it, it has to be so outrageous, so ridiculous, so completely insane that, 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 that the masses will be like, please, God, what has come of us? Please help us. And when I think that cry finally is made, we're going to shift in our octave. That's what I feel. So the, 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 the bringing peace is so important to wherever you are, whoever you're with. And then just on what you said, said, Patricia, with respect to the vaccine, I said to my husband, I'm like, over my dead body, I will take my own life. I know that sounds crazy. And a lot of people will be like, oh my gosh, why would you do that? I'm not afraid of death. And I'm certainly not afraid to be back with source because I don't believe that death is even real, it's an illusion. So that's why I can make that statement. So by, what a wonderful way to swim off to the dolphins and go, okay, you guys, you can, you, you, you guys go ahead and keep this, but I'm out and I'm taking my soul out of here and I'll, uh, I'll show up in a, when it's appropriate. That's all I wanted to share, so go ahead, Carol. Thank you, Paula. Um, with the, with the soul contracts, the way I, I found part of mine is through shamanic journeying. So I began to channel the Pleiadians um, 
And then it was during shamanic journeys that I was able to see part of my soul contract in this lifetime um, as a star seed and my mission and my reason, my purpose for being here, why I was here, where I came from, what my mission is, what my purpose is, why I'm here. I won't say I was shown all of it, but I was shown uh, the vast majority of it, the, the vast, um, the main, the main soul, soul contract. So I would recommend that, that with, with the time we're in now, you know, we've got a very short window of opportunity to, to, to be part of this and to make changes and to make the galactic the, the leap of of awareness and consciousness and ascension and i would highly recommend anyone listening if they want to know their soul contract to go and do a shamanic journey because it's higher or it's deeper than a meditation um and that was that to me that was my kind of um one of my awakenings um and the the so to so I would recommend to do it individually a shamanic journey, um, and also if you want to to see how you've known your partner or to see how you've known someone else, if you actually do a shamanic journey together and hold hands, you will both go to the same um, into the same shamanic journey because you've got a physical. Um, connection here by, by the physical physicality of actually holding the person's hand um, but also you know with, with with humanity as a whole you know everything is there's, there's so much going on at the moment on, on multi-dimensional levels and 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 lots of different 3d stuff going on as well so we really are in a space where we need to let go of the old stuff our old beliefs of what we used to believe because we we just need to let that go and let that fall away and step into an in, into our divine sovereignty into a new space into a new era into a new time into a new frequency into a new dimension because that will take us forward so we simply need to let the old melt away fall away um disintegrate I'm no longer the person I was um, six months ago. None of us are. You know, where all, everything is changing and everything is falling away. So we need to, so it would, would, would really help people, I think, to, for them to, to discover their own soul contracts by doing a shamanic journey or doing a meditation or asking their guides or their loved ones or spirit or the Pleiadians or whoever they're connected to um so yeah um and i think i think it's, it's a beautiful time that we're in i think it's amazing time we're in um and I'm, i've kind of been in between that energy of being in a in a higher um blissful state of being and then i find i get really angry about things I get really angry about things not fear but just anger, and I, 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 Kerry made a good point earlier about righteous anger, um, that it, it's motivating and it, it puts you into action. And that's where, it, you know, I've always found that anger does that for me. It motivates me, it puts me into action. So I think there, there's always a, a positive from a negative. So, you know, anger is not always a negative thing. If you allow it to put you into into action into positive action um yeah and just thank you all for letting me be here it, it's um it's beyond words i'm just so grateful so grateful to be here on earth at this time and for a long time i didn't actually want to be here at all um because it was too different too much uh, too much of a lower frequency but now i'm realizing have realized more and more that that we're here for a purpose and it's not just our whole lifetimes as starseeds throughout our whole lifetime as starseeds but it's also 
this event on earth. This is why we're here. So, um, yeah, it's just amazing. So I'm just going to put myself on mute. Thank you, Carol. Jen, you wanted to share something. Go ahead. And then we'll go over to Jen. Jen, Jen McCarty, and then we'll go to Jen first. Yeah. So. <laughs> Unmute, Jen. Unmute. Hi, guys. Sorry, can you hear me? I just wanted to share something in relation to what Magenta and Laura said about this, um, what's going on with these rituals. And um, what I've noticed is that, you know, like in London yesterday, they were all on their knees shouting, I, chanting, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Everyone is like shouting, I can't breathe. And while wearing their masks, and it's so clearly like a cabal agenda it, that, that we're being targeted. And um, I just wanna just draw our, our listeners' attention to that, that, that that is part of the ritual and that that is part of the real, real heavy duty programming that is going on right now. And people need to stop that. So you, you are affirming that you can't breathe you are affirming that a massive group of people can't breathe that's not okay to me that is that is the height of ignorance I'm just gonna say it, that is the height of ignorance and so um, what I will say is that you know it's a very very contentious issue what is going on with this whole black lives matter but I refuse to drop into the idea of victimhood like I know who you are whether you know who you are or not I know that you are God's daughter and you are God's son and you are almighty and you are powerful and you're sovereign and so and I know that every single one of us have been done over by the cabal whether it's sexual abuse whether it's absent fathers whether it's just complete and utter perpetual abuse from the deep state like every single one of us have got different aspects of of being like abused by the deep state and um I just think it's really, really important that we draw everyone's attention to the fact that, you know, we're not victims. And so by you saying, by, by you taking on this, this idea that you're a victim, like that's what you're creating. You are then creating a timeline where you are being a victim and, and where you're being victimized. I refuse to play into that because I know who you are. I see you as sovereign, whether you are awake or not, I I will see the truth of who you are. And um, I just think it's really, really important. And, and I think it's really, really important that we come together and have a very, very mature and calm conversation about how we can make um, you know, life on earth more beautiful for our black brothers and sisters. I am totally 100% up for having that conversation in a calm and mature way. Um, and, um, and I think it's really, really important that we have that conversation, but, but the the way it's being hijacked by the deep state is, is, is shocking, it's absolutely shocking and I really really hope that people who are watching this video are gonna like wake up and realize that, that, that we're being played like your your godliness and your power and almighty sovereignty is is being played on a very very high level and you are being manipulated and it's not good enough like every single one of us has the opportunity to awaken out of out of this 3d matrix consciousness every single one of us has the tools to be able to find our god self and it's freaking hard and we must burn all darkness and all shadow but everyone has the equal opportunity no matter what race no matter who you are and that is a fact it, it's very very hard for anyone to wake up it's very hard for anyone to be enlightened but you must burn off your ego and you must you must awaken and you can awaken and so I, I just I just want to just just put that out there that just really really hoping and praying our brothers and sisters can wake up to this this real dark ritual that that the deep state is is um is perpetuating on, onto the masses right now so that's what i want to say about the ritual sort of blm part of it all um what i would like to say about um the whole sort of contract thing is that 
believe that we make positive contracts and, and, and maybe you could say negative contracts prior to our incarnation. But I believe that the negative contracts, like maybe they are that you're going to be um, get tied up in an abusive relationship or a really, really super toxic relationship to pay back some karma or, or to learn about empowerment. Like, so I, I, I genuinely think that we have like positive contracts and negative contracts. But I think a lot of these negative contracts stay stay negative and and become programs until we shine the light on them and and once the light is shone on a program it's no longer a program it becomes a choice and i think it's really really important that 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 we that we call that that we name that so many of us have these programs which are part of this third dimensional matrix we've all signed up to you know be believe in, in in the illusion up to a certain point up to a certain point whereby we have our awakening and and we and we um break cut ourselves loose from the matrix so um and i know that for myself when i had my awakening when i was 21 in the himalayas the first thing that my spirit team brought to my awareness was my contracts and i was brought back to that time prior to my incarnation um where, where i made the contracts and very very quickly i i I, em I empowered my voice and my sovereignty and I broke all negative contracts that weren't serving me. And so with my voice, I just spoke out to the universe that from this moment on, I null and void all negative contracts that are no longer serving me. And I called on Archangel Michael and I call and I visualized his mighty Excalibur sword and I just cut those contracts. And I think that it's something that most of us on the, on the truly, truly awakened path, it's like the first thing that we realize that, that um, you know, that we have to like check where we're at with our contracts. <laughs> so um so positive contracts and and i'd love to share with you all like something really really inspiring around like positive contracts so i used to be a fashion designer for about 11 years and um and, and then when i the universe really really pushed me into this role of being like a teacher way shower and whatever it is that I am and so as I was transitioning careers it was like it, I was I was quite resistant because I loved being a fashion designer and I was really afraid to suddenly like go into a new career and not have an income but my team were like no 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 you are not being a fashion designer the world needs you the world needs your voice you've got to get out there and do this work so I was like okay oh, I've got no choice in the matter and um and so I went up to Glastonbury tour like on, on the day that I decided, like I committed to this path and I, and I, and I said a prayer and I, and I called all of the brothers and sisters that I have made a soul contract to work with in this lifetime. I said to them, all, I, I call the higher self of every single brother and sister that I've made a soul contract to work with in this lifetime. I am ready and I am here and I'm willing to serve you. And from that, like literally within the first week of my my sort of like new business career path you could say i i earned more money that week than i had been in absolutely like months as a as a fashion designer so so that that's a really beautiful like our contracts that we have with our brothers and sisters that we've made a sole contract to work with and i share that with my with my clients and um it's, it's just really really powerful so couldn't down the stick love you all Thank you, Jen. I want to come back after to the BLM movement and all, uh, and all that stuff, but Jen has uh, something we're going to share right now, so we'll come back to that after. Oh, thank you. Feeling, feeling the sisters in this space so strongly, and thank you for speaking into Glastonbury tour just then, Jen. It's like, hi. Um, yeah, look, I, I want to bring in the element around contracts of the embodiment, our embodiment. And I have had an interesting journey in that much of my time in other lives has been disembodiment. So the gift that that has given me is a sense of seeing everybody and how much they occupy their physical space. And I understand contracts because I have broken every single one that was humanly and inhumanly possible by the contracts of disembodiment that so many humans have been in for such a long time. 
And what was really interesting this week, there was so much beautiful sharing around children, like children, 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 the children. And, you know, I looked, I looked at what was going on in the world. It's like, wow, we're actually seeing how we all behaved as children showing up on the big stage. So I'm, I'm literally seeing, you know, everyone in their little meat suits running around as, as children, you know, turning the table, spoiling the pot spoiling the party and wrecking things to get noticed to be seen to be heard to to show up and i'm like wow fantastic now we get to play because everyone is playing like children so i sat with that and i was really shown you know how does the child of god play and what is that energy what is that threshold and then a lot of the work i do it's like yeah beautiful jen your job is to actually flip it, to turn it, to swing the pendulum completely the opposite way. So in that energy, and it was similar to what you beautiful women share, it was many um, nights of deep dreaming and deep awareness. But to meet and hold the energy of the child of Satan. And to feel and see and know that that is what we're seeing playing out in so many people of key power, where the power has been flipped to that end of the spectrum. And to be really able to know that place within me, like as a child, I have a deep memory of feeling like a child of Satan, that it was wrong, bad, evil. And because I could hold, I had an incredible capacity to hold the dark because I have incredible capacity to hold the light. And remembering meeting that place within me, I was like, well, I must be rotten to the core because I can feel what is going on behind the masks of adulthood. I can feel it in every cell of my body. So I'll just keep that really quiet. And then this this sense with this child of Satan energy, and it cracked me open this week, is that only a mother's love can see and transmute whatever that contract is within that energy. So I have been holding so deeply within me, like the, the child of Satan energy, you are welcome with me, you are welcome to sit in this polarity with me as we work this bit out as we hold the possibility for deep contractual change on all levels. And as you beautiful women were sharing, what I was shown is the electrical circuitry. I work a huge amount with the, the physical body and we are a cascade of switches, yeses and nos in brilliance of cascade system. And electrically, there's this amazing um, pattern I was just shown the second around the masculine and feminine parts of the electrical wiring, which I feel arise going to be moving into what this is. And in terms of the feminine pattern and the electrical switch gates in the body, we feminine, we magnify everything. Love it. It's like we got it. We make it bigger. We magnify, we magnify, we magnify. And so the energy is what's called an and gate electronically. This and this and this and this. The satanic switch, if you like, or the flip side or the pendulum swing is what they call a nand gate, which is not an and gate. So it can get sold as an and 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 yet actually it's a nand which is not an and so it is deception woven in to the magnification of the feminine body on the flip side of that is the energy of what is called the or gate or so that is more of the masculine energy the penetrative the directive that straight line energy so that is the yes and no, yes or no, yes or no, yes or no. So it narrow, narrow, narrows it down. Yet if you add the deception quality to that, you then have the nor, which is not 
and or gate. So we believe in the past, we've been making a choice that is love based. So many people have been led down that deception, yet it is not an or. So they are getting steered instead of that directive of an or gate, it is a curve. So it creates a distorted curve and it is not a choice towards love. So when I get these, um, experiences within a beautiful group like this. Um, I have grandmother spider, I have the whole crew, I'm sitting in the web and I'm holding those pieces within the collective. So um, I just wanted to share that, um, that that is what I'm experiencing, that is what I'm holding within this group. Um, and it's the mother's love within me, within this planet that can hold those extremes. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Okay, does anybody else want to share before we go back to Araya and Nina? Okay, Nina's going to share and then we'll go back to Araya and we'll go through the contracts. Is that cool? This is just so brilliant. And I just wanted to share that with my own journey with contracts, what I had to come to was really facing that if I carried a lot of these divine feminine archetypes and I had had these lifetimes that I could remember, what was the shadow aspect of that? And so when I work with men and women, I see a lot of the same contracts that are very much connected to um, priestess lifetimes, sacrificial lifetimes. So what I would invite people to do is when you're looking at your own contracts and you're saying, what could my contracts be? You really need to look at your shadow. What is happening unconsciously or what keeps Re being recreated into your life. What do you keep continuously attracting that you're going, what, what is it like? I'm wearing a sign that says, you know, abuse me. In some ways, what's happening is you're becoming aware of this contract that you are embodying. And so for me, for example, I had to really admit, okay, I, I continually attracted sexual abuse. I continually would walk down the street and men would say the most sexually horrific things to me. It was like, I could be wearing a paper bag over my head. It didn't matter. It had nothing to do with what I was dressing as or anything, which finally led me to realizing I had a contract to be a vessel virgin. I had a contract to be a sexual sacrifice. Um, and so a lot of the really common ones, when you're, what, with what we're seeing with the collective right now is I see a ritual in which everyone in the collective has agreed to be a sacrifice. Everyone has agreed to be harvested off of. Everyone has agreed to, uh, to, to wear a veil of blindness to the truth, to be forbidden to speak the truth. And so when you start breaking it down, because what's happening is a lot of people are going, well, how do I look at my own contracts, Nina? You know, because how do I do this work? And so I think that it's really important to, to really really look at what is it that I am saying unconsciously yes to in my energy field that I continually attract. If I'm having issues with money, perhaps I have a contract to be um, in poverty or to glorify poverty or to believe that that is sacred. So I, I just really wanted to share that piece because I think that, that it's important for everybody to hear that and a lot of what we're seeing is the reversal of the priestess, the reversal of the priest. They are essentially hijacking the most sacred things that, that we participated in that we know how to do. And they're hijacking the codes, which they can't do, but that's what they're trying to do with the collective ritual that everyone is participating in. Thanks, Nina. Thank you. Okay, so this is probably a good time for Araya to sh Oh no, sorry, Mary Catherine wants to say something really quickly. I know. Totally quick. It's about actually the timeline convergences. We're, what, everything that we're talking about is essentially this massive timeline convergence and the manipulation of a said direct timeline that they're trying to create through the contracts. Um, that's all I needed to say is that we're recognizing that. That's it. <laughs> um, and that holding the vision, the vision of what we are now creating as visionaries. And as we also in allow in that way that as we hold it, we're 
almost giving the sense that others are also allowed and have their permission to hold that vision and therefore bypass or direct through and create the new timeline um, that we are all here to do. So there's something with timelines had to be said. So thank you. <laughs> Just going to put that down. And thank you, Araya. Go, go ahead, Araya. Yes, I was just unmuting. Thank you, everyone. I mean, I, I feel like um, what I'm hearing so much of today is a lot of solutions to the problems, too. Obviously, we're, we're talking about what's going on, but, but I'm hearing so many beautiful, amazing solutions, like what you were just talking about, Mary, with the new, bringing in new timelines, dreaming in new timelines. Patricia, you were talking about the shield, and so many, uh, everybody said so many amazing things. Um, and what I was being shown while everybody was talking is how people have been getting sucked into some of this stuff. Like Patricia, you were saying, how does this happen? We all have a shield that we can use. Is I was seeing like these groups that are creating these um, negative narratives are pulling people into these portals. And I mean, it sucks them in, you know, you pull the, the whole thing about skin color and, and it triggers people and then they get sucked into these portals. So I think one of the solutions is staying present. As we learn to stay present and go, wait a minute, that's not mine. And Paula, you were talking about that kind of like the, a lot of us, the beehive mentality, or the group think mentality sucks you into a portal. But if you're present, you can go, wait a minute, I see what's happening. No, no, that's not mine. And the same thing with this nanotechnology and everything else that, that's being thrown at us. It's like, wait a minute, that's not my thought. And no, my, I feel something being triggered in my body because the nanotechnology can program mind control. It can, it can download demonic energy. It can do all kinds of things. But if we are in a state of presence, even if somebody didn't walk through what we're going to do today, they could reach the point where that presence supersedes any power that anything has over them by nearly disengaging and going, that is not me, that's not my truth. So I just wanna, wanted to, to share that part. Um, and what I would love to do is, I'm just gonna share the contracts that I was given that are kind of like group mass planetary contracts that a, a, a lot of people have. Not everybody may have them. We, some of us might not have them anymore, but this is about kind of dismantling uh, the collective uh, overall collective energies and then if anybody like and I'll walk us through you know the disengaging of the nanotech part two and then if anybody wants to share contracts that they also are, are hearing that we need to release throw them in you know this is just everybody put in whatever they have um, to share about this and so I wanted to add um, something Nina said as one of the contracts because that that to be a sacrifice considering what's going on with the whole BLM movement and everything like that I think that's been added to the collective right now that you know um, and and that's the thing the the new contracts they they come in place some of them have been anchored since we were born and or before that and some of them are new ones coming in that are you know that's what i'm saying like they're trying to kind of get through these loopholes and they're like well let's try this now oh let's try this now you know they're trying everything they can to hold on to this power uh, and stay afloat these these darker groups so so do you guys want to get into some of this stuff now all right, awesome. All right, so one of the techniques in the Pleiadian work, I mean, you guys all probably have your own techniques to cancel contracts. I'm just gonna share one for everybody who's watching if, if they don't have a technique, is to basically, as we go through the contracts, basically visualize a piece of paper as if it's a, a physicalized contract and you see what's written on it. And then in my work, we kind of take a little pretend cancel stamp and you just see it canceled, tear it up, and I use rainbow flames because the light all has a different frequencies and can dissolve into the rainbow flame. So that's just one way anyone who's watching could choose to do it. So the first one that I heard was the permission. So we want to, if you want to move through anybody who feels they want to cancel any of these, clearing and canceling the permission to control our minds, emotion, physical bodies through nanotechnology. Canceling and clearing the permission to control our minds, emotions, or physical bodies through nanotechnology. So anybody who was not conscious of it or, un or unconsciously agreed to it, releasing that. We cancel the contract to be slaves. We cancel as a collective the contract that they have the permission to mind control in any time, especially while we are asleep. 
was that's what I realized when they were doing the rituals in the middle of the night and people are asleep that a lot of the activity and the electromagnetic energies are being directed in the middle of the night. We affirm we are sovereign due to soul, even if we have synthetic nanotech in our bodies. We cancel the agreement with this dark group that we need another calamity to awaken. That we need any other calamities to awaken and crises. We cancel this contract to allow ourselves to be tracked, vaccinated in any way through technology, nanotechnology, through spirits, through ritual, or anything we don't know the name of in all time and space and holographic realities. And then the last one, adding Nina, is we cancel the contract to be a sacrifice for the human soul and being to be sacrificed and so it is so be it and i still want anybody you know i'm going to go through the nanotech thing now <clears throat> and and then please everybody add whatever other things you want to clear or cancel so we summon now archangel michael of the light to be present and i'm just going to bring in the, the beings that taught me this technique the Pleiadian emissaries of light to be here. And we could choose, if this is a, a way that works for you, to see ourselves projected onto a golden screen. So this is like a, our healing screen, our feared body being projected onto the screen. And what I was shown we can do is because violet is such a high vibration, we throw violet at the screen and ask for it to land anywhere there is nanotechnology devices and what what i was shown is they look like little bugs they're microscopic but you could just see them as like you know whatever size bugs and you may see one two you may see a hundred wherever it lands you kind of take a look and just see if it's landing on anything maybe there's nothing there maybe there's something there and then what we do is we just see ourselves pulling out in groups and clusters, this nanotechnology, these bug-like parasitic living beings or living AI that have a consciousness implanted in them, and we see them being placed in a Merkaba, a double tetrahedron Merkaba, two pyramids, one on top of the other and upside down. And we see that being spinned out of our energy fields like a tornado spun out of our energy fields. And we hand that to Archangel Michael to transmute. We hand this mark about. And in the Pleiadian work, when we remove devices, this is really simple, similar to when we remove the implants from the ETs, the other darker ETs. We see if there's wires there. So we also go ahead and imagine you got a little eraser and we go ahead and see if there's any little wires left over after you move the nanotech. And you go ahead and just erase the wires anywhere in your body, just go around and erase. And then the last piece is we call in from the Pleiadians one of the tools called a quantum transfiguration grid. And this is a grid that burns away the dense energy and the damage done by these inserts these implants so we see this ultraviolet light with grid lines going everywhere everywhere that you saw the nanotechnology or you felt it in your body if you some people don't see they, they feel it or they have a knowing that it's there and we just see that grid dissolving any dense energy out of the body healing and transmuting and the pleiadians kind of help hold and anchor that And then we just give thanks to any of the beings that have been helping. And so 
I know that I printed up a write-up of how to do this procedure um, and we'll have it posted under the video as well for anybody who, who's watching who feels they want to do this or share it with their family. Somebody mentioned that. Let's do this for our family. Let's do this for our friends. We need to do it over and over again because it is a theoric. So the more you clear something in the theoric, the more it can, trend, it can show up in the physical reality. So we could check in. You could use this once a month, you know, because we're outside still breathing the air and dealing with stuff. So at once a month, check in, do I, got, do I got any this month to clear? And this is one of the ways, you know, that I think could help. So hopefully it was helpful to everybody. And I'd love to hear what anybody else wants to add. And you guys are also amazing and, and powerful. And I'm, I'm such in gratitude for being able to share my little part. So thank you. Thank you, Araya. Thank you very much. So that was, that was for everybody here, obviously, as we gather in great strength but for everybody too that is listening that might not have awareness of these techniques. So now I'm gonna hand it over to Laura, because you mentioned, Laura, you've got something you wanna to share to us as well. And then I wanna, I could talk like for another hour. <laughs> I could stay on the phone with you guys all day long. Um, yes, so that's all so powerful uh, because it's energy maintenance. When we draw attention to something, you know, we, we, we are able to like move it out. Um, our higher, selves our connection with zero point unified field is something that is needing to participate in the physical realm to burn through the net to burn through whatever is blocking the signals with um, our own divinity and that's going to actually help clear things you know for other people and so it requires energy maintenance just like our physical space re requires us to clean up after a meal so we can make a new one or else germs come, parasites come. So our inability to have energetic maintenance makes us incredibly vulnerable to parasitic attack. And because we're dealing with exploded planets, galactic wars and things that basically we're targeting the balance of the masculine and feminine to the point where it turned our DNA into junk DNA because that separation and division got greater and greater, you know, to me, you know, it, it, it opened up a portal for these warring races to come in that, that feed on and thrive on, you know, this imbalance and this chaos and this, you know, divide and conquer. So we came here for soul and spiritual development. And one of the big things that we need to remind ourselves of is that we're integrating fragments. We're needing to come together. We're needing to find the balance. We're needing to connect with the earth and help with the repair work of the earth grids that have been messed with so that we naturally are born into a world that um, holds that disconnect because the planetary body and the grids have been attacked just as much as our own personal DNA. And so, you know, people forget that they're here for spiritual and soul development and they're so wrapped up in wanting to feel accepted that it's very easy for them to be indoctrinated because there's a reward system connected to it. And, and they might not have gotten approval from their parents. So they get approval from cults or secret societies or, um, you know, these movements where, you know, somebody's going to pat you on the back and say, you know, here's your reward and, and you're doing great. And, you know, well-intentioned people who don't realize they're serving a dark agenda that just are still dealing with a broken self-esteem and, and just don't know how to get over the hump. And so this is what I feel a lot of our contracts are, at least mine, is to go through those dark night of the souls, to face things like a Mars recruitment or being steered into a timeline I didn't want to be on, and to face all those things that said, you don't have a choice, you're coming with us whether you like it or not, and to say, oh yeah, watch. The, there's no way and like and to allow the adversity to actually strengthen me and help me be stronger in who I am and let the adversity remind me of who I am because I can see the contrast of you know this is somebody trying to take away my freedom versus something in me that can connect to something else that absolutely refuses and will never allow that so so the support I want to give humanity is how to get through these initiations because their growth is being stunted and just like you guys were talking about the hijacking, the intent that they have is being hijacked. Um, and so instead of being able to move through their dark night of the soul or their trigger or their trauma to find real connection with community that absolutely is holding a space of unconditional love and support, they're looking to these, you know, false systems to appease um, that part of who they are. And that's what happens when a person gets sick. They sometimes will go on a pharmaceutical. If they're having a breakdown because they can't handle a download or if they're having, you know, a Pluto transit crisis and they feel you know, really lost, there's not enough support, which we're holding for the planet, and that's why we've all come together. But in society, there's not enough support to breathe through that stuff and understand that it's a huge part of awakening and it's a huge initiation that's going to help us to connect. Instead, they're like, I'm going to go on a drug and mask it, 
or I'm going to join this and they're going to tell me what's wrong with me or they're going to tell me how to do it and then I'll be rewarded or I'll be cured or I won't have to feel. And so um, it's hitting us at every angle. But, you know, I think the fear of people's own personal sovereignties are so afraid to fall back on themselves. And, and religion has really distorted their connection with the divine that they don't realize that after you go through the dark night of the soul, you find your source God divine blueprint within, which connects to, you know, what is outside of us. And it begins to clear the fences and seals that have been placed in our DNA. And, you know, so, so to me, it's just this stunted growth. And, um, and if people can see that adversity as a part of the contract, you know, to become senior to these lower forces, to, to be face to face with it, and then make a choice in that moment to say, I'm going to choose me, I'm going to choose love, I'm going to choose, you know, um, somebody who can actually listen to me and help me work through this shadow stuff, or help hold space for me to become a sovereign being versus connecting to something external that is basically, you know, owning the process, because a huge portion of the collective consciousness is being owned and steered. Um, so to me, it's like, all of these are initiations. All of these are important uh, events in a person's life to be up against an obstacle, to be up against a barrier first originating within the self, seeing all, it also in society, and then making a choice in that moment to not choose the group mind and to understand how dangerous the societal and governmental structures have been. And to also see the anomaly of this particular person coming into office to actually help you know, take this down. But that's, you know, a whole other thing that might not be, you know, possible. But the thing is, it's like the conspiracy theory projection is masking their ability to see that we hold love and concern. And we're coming from a place of protection. We're coming from a place of wanting to help a person develop themselves and be the best of who they are and not be sidelined, not be sidetracked and not be um, uh, sabotaged. And it's coming from love. It's not coming from political beliefs. It's not coming from conspiracy theories. It's not coming from new age deception. And, and if those people could just get true enough with themselves, they'd be able to see the intent of beings like us that are coming with this, you know, kind of love. Because ultimately, it's not about thinking the way that we do. It's about helping that person be the best of themselves with a direct connect with spirit and source, a connection with this earth, and the ability for everything else to be cleared and alchemized. You know, it's coming, you know, from love. And, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, this is how the system needs to be starved is that we have to face these, these symptoms, th these traumas, these physical symptoms and, um, and, and breathe through it and, and, and find the inner resources, you know, to overcome them because everything outside, everything that's externalized is literally a piece of that hijacking. But if we, you know, can encourage people that there are a lot of us that can just hold space for a person to move through that dark night of the soul and move through those initiations. All of those events in a person's life connected to the initiations from these outer planets are going to help upgrade their DNA, you know, and, and, and there's, there's that choice in that moment when we hit adversity, are we going to allow ourselves to grow and transform? Or are we just going to hand it over to somebody else and say, I need to join your group. I need to have you do it for me. I need you to give me a drug because I'm so afraid of myself. The thing is, we got to drop those projections and just know that we're shattering the old world and it's very symptomatic, but it's the most empowering and important thing we could possibly do. So let's breathe through the discomfort, knowing that these are the growing pains to recover ourselves instead of be so afraid of facing you know, the pain and the discomfort of awakening and handing it over to the parasites. Because ultimately, we just need to find balance and wholeness. Nothing that's parasitic can invade a whole organism in a balanced organism. And um, I just hope people know that people like us are here to help you find that within yourselves as we're doing that work for ourselves and that we're a family in this and we all need to hold hands and have each other's back. You don't need to give that power away to something that's streaming through the media because that is the, the greatest weapon of mind control on this planet. I, f I feel like it's like boom, boom, you know, <laughs> like the couple of things I wanted to add. Um, yeah, it's kind of like w what we're walking through right now is uh, the result of past thought. This is what we've already thought, already created. And now we're walking through the manifestation of it. And it seems like, you know, how afraid can humanity be? 
and then I'm going to change gears because I got two little thoughts and then I'm going to blow it up completely. This whole crown thing that's going on with the monarch right now, it feels to me like it's time to dethrone the crown from the egoic self and to put the king's crown where it rightly it believes to be, which is Christ consciousness, which is, which is love of all beings, that there's nothing outside of the creator, and that, that, that the idea of God is the substance of all things in form and not in form. So I thought that I wanted to share. And then I'm going to blow it up a little bit because here in North America, we are already seeing pictures of this fellow, um, George, uh, where he hasn't actually left the planet, that it was all a big hoax. This is already starting to surface. And for those that uh, follow Q, there have been a couple of posts even that he's been implying, hello, George. Now, more people have died, have been injured, have been hurt as a result of these protests than the original intention with whatever they were trying to do with the police officer that had a long connection to the gentleman, because it seems interesting, you know, nobody else is allowed a, f a funeral right now, but this man was given a funeral with the golden casket. Isn't that tied into ritual as well? And then how would humanity feel if this whole global riot was started, or rather that whole false flag, if you will, was, was uh, created to start this riot globally. And it's not even true, because as Jen mentioned, it has been infiltrated. It's been infiltrated by the group, I don't wanna say the name, but the MB, that's what insurgents is. That's the group that believes in Sharia law, because the first place that had the riots in Minnesota, that's where I think they allowed over 30 or 40,000 Refugee, refugees to take hold there, and they're fighting very, very strongly for Sharia law to be in that, that state. And it's happening in other areas as well. So I just thought I would share that. And why not unmute now and see, see, see where we go with that with our last few minutes. Go ahead, Patricia. Um, I think that it's important not to see episodes playing out but rather to understand that this is a continuum. So the riots now are just an out, uh, an, an playing out of a distinct, determined plan, New World Order, call it what you want, uh, that keeps inventing. They're not, what am I trying to say? It's not like, oh, that didn't work, let's try this. It is a distinct program. The program is to bring people to their knees to be prepared for absolute slavery, okay? There's nothing new in that. Uh, let's cut their oxygen off. Let's cut their pranic energies off. Let's break down these little individual units to the point where they're prepared to take the chip and become completely obedient slaves. And so, you know, how do you do that? Well, for, for I mean, since I'm alive, it's a continuum of, uh, division that is race, sex, gender identity, uh, adult children, uh, uh, pedophilism, let's bring it all out, perpetuated constantly with, with false flag after false flag after false flag. And so this George episode, this is probably going to create a stir in the media. Um, it couldn't be more obvious to anybody that's got their eyes open. Uh, first of all, first of all, that you're making a hero out of somebody uh, that we may not be sure really actually is dead. Is that going to shake up a few opinions here? <laughs> but regardless, watching it all play out, mob mentality, it's, it's, it's been set up with the intention. What, what we have to get to is not the manifestation but the intention, until we are clear about the intention and more people finally start to understand the intention and divine, uh, sorry, take the divine out, the plan, where they're headed, there'll never be resolution because people will still be jockeying in the manifestation crisis rather than 
getting to the point of what exactly am I supposed to be feeling? What is being generated here that I'm supposed to be reacting to? And so we've still got the masses in reaction mode. And, but the joyous information is that more of us are in the understanding of the intention mode. And, you know, we've been talking about some very incredible things today. And, you know, intention, has the word has come up several times. And for me, intention is everything. In order to understand anything, I have to see the intention behind it. So the disruption of the planet of, of civilization is the intention to take us into obedience. And every, there'll be another, what'll come after this? People are talking about now the invasion, the fake invasion is next. But what's very exciting when we have to hold on to and share is that it's not working, right? We had the, what was before the, 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 the virus? <laughs> Pick your poison. Let's remember the pink hats. The hatred, the Donald the Trump syndrome, hate, 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 division, 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 and always understanding the, the intention is to divide and conquer. And in comes Trump, and I'm going to have to speak my mind about Trump, because whoever said, I think it was maybe, I don't remember, but uh, when I first saw Trump, I thought, well, he's, look, he's trying to live like an idiot. He's going out of his way to look like an idiot. And I, you know, I saw the energy and I thought, yeah, no, I'm in conflict here because I'm hearing an idiot. I'm seeing a light being. Mm. And I very quickly realized that Trump was putting on a show because he knew that he was going to be getting attacked at levels that were every level from the etheric all the way down to every single possible field uh, around him because what he's going after is I'm getting goosebumps is you know the ultimate takedown of this force that we've been talking about nonstop, right? So I'm looking at an idiot and I'm feeling a light worker and I was conflicted and I think some of you will agree I was conflicted until I realized that okay what he's doing here is disarming he's making it look like he's an easy mark He's disarming the big guns that are going for him on high levels, and he's taking them down to the chattering box level. And the pink hats and everybody hating whatever he said, foolish things, while he was working up here in that power, right? And now that it's show and tell time, I think we can all feel that he's coming into that power. He's showing that power. And this is why they're running him up because they see him for who he is. They may have already known him, known it. A lot of, of these players may have known it, but the world is seeing it. No matter what they throw at him, that force is strong. I'm thrilled to see it. I'm not a person who's looking for a savior because I am the master of my ship. And, uh, but you know, it's nice to know that we do have the light forces are showing their, their strength because there's been a long time when we, starseed, whatever we want to name ourselves, have been feeling like, oh, that would be an excellent time to see some <laughs> shifting here. And uh, this is it. You know, we were, we're at the great divide here. Now, I may have gone off track in what I'm saying because I get emotional when I talk about Trump. But I see this. I see this great shift. I see the light forces uniting. Look at us. We're few of the many. And I cannot help but look at Trump. And when I see this man, I see intent, focused intent, like I have never seen from any politician, any monarch, let's forget that, anyone in power has never, never in my life, not even Kennedy, who we didn't get a chance to really see him do much, right? Well, gave me the experience of seeing someone intent on the light, serving the light. And so, you know, what a time to be alive. What a time to watch people feel that, to shift over to it, to get out of the chattering box mode of hating everything. Eventually they're gonna get bored with it. How much more can they do it? How much more can they be on their knees to the illusion, to the fantasy, to the fear, to the anger uh, before, this overriding light wins. 
touches them, brings them up from the dregs that they're in, the confusions. And uh, that's what we're doing. And that's where we are. That's where we are, people. And, you know, well, we can do contracts all we want, but man, this is what we came to do to support that intention. And we are strong, our numbers are huge, and we're starting to see it. Man, oh man, am I grateful. Thank you. <laughs> I, I think everybody should just unmute. We're gonna have to figure it out because we've got so much to say. <laughs> I'm just going to jump in then and I'm going to say that to, to add on to George Floyd, it's really important that everybody starts studying symbolism because if you start studying the symbolism of the Illuminati, that man was tattooed all over his body in Illuminati Masonic symbolism. And what those are is those signify his ranking within those orders. Those signify what he has done for them. Those signify the sacrifices he has participated in. And what that was, was that was a massive televised ritualistic sacrifice. Whether he's alive or dead, I'll be honest, I am not sure about yet. I'm very open to the possibility that he's actually quite alive. And there seems to be a lot of information that is coming out right now to prove that. Um, but whatever it is that they're pushing on us from the MSM, whatever it is that they're trying to push the masses towards, that's what you want to absolutely open your eyes up to and go why and go in the absolute opposite direction. If they're telling you to wear a mask, do not wear a mask. If they're telling you you can't to say I can't breathe, absolutely don't say that. If they're telling you to get on your knees, you don't get on your knees for anybody but the creator source. That's who I've gotten on my knees for. And it's time for us to stand up and to embody sovereignty and to say no, no. But that requires being fearless of death. And really, honestly, that's what it comes down to is that's where I am at this point. I am absolutely fearless of death. And when you get to that point, they have no power over you anymore because you are ruled by life, which is source creator God that lives within you because there is no death. And if you remember past lives, because I know a lot of you do, because the majority do, then I can prove to you that death is not real. It is an illusion and you will only transform because we've done this over and over and over. But this time we get to do this and rise in love because this is Gaia's freeing. This is when we awaken. This is when the cycle of duality ends. So I have great faith that we are going to get through this. I am, I 100% believe in all of us. And I just want all of the star seeds and Galactus and family of light listening to this right now. If you just go into your hearts, you will feel all of us around the globe. We are connected together and we are holding this place of resonance and stability because it is very possible what I've seen this weekend and continually being told to prepare for is there will be a lot of death. And I'm not going to lie about that. There are a lot of souls that made soul contracts to transition very soon. And we have to understand that death is a transition. And so as they are exiting the planet, and I've seen tons and tons of souls exiting this planet, we have to bless that. We have to bless anyone who decides to become the sacrifice, anyone who decides to participate in these rituals. Every soul is sovereign, whether they know it or not. And we cannot save all of them, and it's not our job. We're just here to serve. We are here to play our, our roles, and that's what we do. So bless, bless everyone. Blessed be. Blessed be. Thank you, Blessed Nina. Be. And I just really want to say, it, you know, you're totally right, Patricia. It is just chapter after chapter after chapter. And whilst we have um, a very incredibly powerful soul removing the cause physically, I feel like what's really important in talking about contracts and clearing is to go straight to the root, is go straight to the handful of individuals, of souls on this planet who are creating all of this. And actually just go to the root and cleanse that and heal that. And we all know that holding that space of unconditional love whilst allowing all souls to transcend and heal and move through all the emotions and undo all the contracts and everything else that's happening. Thank you, my love. I've just been brought a nice cup of tea. 
Um, that the unconditional love can also disempower the darkest agenda on this planet. And Archangel Michael, you, I love it when anybody talks about Archangel Michael. He was with me for about two years and teaching me a very simple technique to actually go from an extreme emotion or extreme fear or a, 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 an illusion of darkness, because that's what this is. It's an illusion of darkness that's creating this dark agenda that is the cabal that is the deep state that's these souls that are in torment in a very deep way like you said jenny the damaged child the child of satan the sight the child that feels so unlovable that they have gone deep into a very deep dark bad place and what that soul needs more than anything i know that they need removing from the game physically to stop the ritual and enslavement and everything else. But they also need, they need liberation too. Because they're us. I know we project and say it's them and us. But as far as I'm concerned, that's a part of the collective soul. They're me. I'm here with them on this planet for a reason. Gaia created them. Source breathes through them as source breathes through me. We are equal. We are already equal. I don't see that division. I just see we play out different roles. And so what I feel like is really important to do, and I feel like why we come together and what all of us need to do <laughs> is heal the part of us that can't deal with that for a start and go to the inner child in us that's terrified and says, no, it's a bad guy. You know, I'm the victim. Go heal that first. Heal your own inner child. And it is through you know, first of all, breathing, right? You need, to, you need to connect to the lifeline first, take off the masks, actually bloody breathe, prana, oxygen, everything you need, consciousness, back into your body, Con get connected to the divine, number one. Number two, make a decision that you have the power of your free will to do so, and nobody can take that away from you. And number three, go and acknowledge the fear in yourself first and your own shadow and your own darkness and your own ignorance that says that somebody else is more powerful than you. Forgive yourself for believing that or for not knowing. And then through forgiveness, we enter, we talked about this before in the round table, through, through the humility of forgiveness, unconditional love just floods in automatically because it's not something you have to try and visualize or meditate on. It just is. You just unblock what's in the way of love and it will come in. It is, it's automatic. And you can release and love that which was so seemingly seems so evil, so dark, so controlling, so unbeatable. And ask their soul and all fragments of their soul to come back home to the truth, to the source, to the sovereign being that they are. And I feel that when we can do that with ourselves, that we can go and do that on behalf of those <laughs> trapped souls, those tortured inner, ch inner children of the deep state cabal that are ha is, have, is playing all of these games in the first place. Every time I see another episode happen, I'm just seeing a, a soul crying out to be seen. You know, it is part of the agenda, uh, Magenta, you're completely true. They do have to reveal themselves because it's the law of the universe. You must reveal your truth. The law of the universe states that all beings must reveal their truth. And for, for them to have power, they must reveal who they are. And they're desperate for us to see them in such trauma, so messed up. They don't know how to heal themselves. They're so deep in it. They don't know how to get out. But we do. And I feel like if there's anything we can do for this planet and all people on it, it's to go to those most in need, those most in the darkness, and show them and hold that space of unconditional love and use whatever healing modalities we have. Bring the sword of Archangel Michael, cut them three, three. Use the technique, you know, that he shared with me and, you know, to set them free. And, what, what, you know, all of our techniques, whatever we've got, let's throw it at those blessed souls who are trapped and playing out the extreme dark purely for us to wake up and see who we truly are 
I don't feel like it can't be them and us anymore. It's us and us. This is unity consciousness we're talking about on this planet. And it's to get to the, uh, the ultimate, you know, fundamentals of it and not react to all of the little, all of the little dramas that are coming up, but just go straight to the core. It's about unity consciousness. It is us and us. And can we love all of that? Can we love all of us? Can we love all of humanity unconditionally? And I feel like that's our responsibility. I certainly feel like that's my responsibility because it's within my power to do so. And if it's within our power to do so, then all who feel that they can do that, then let's do that. And just put that focus, hold the love for all beings on this planet and, and make sure you're breathing. Take off the bloody masks. <laughs> I'm done. I just, I just want to carry on. Sorry, just commenting very quickly on what Tara said. I agree with everything you've just said and I think it's really, really important to hold the love for every single soul as if they're one unity, including absolutely everyone on this planet, the entire cabal and all of us. But what I would warn against is anyone who feels that they want to go in specifically to a cabal controlled individual or group of individuals and take Archangel Michael's sword and cut the ties they will see that as an attack because of the dark matrix that they are engulfed within and they will attack you back. And I strongly advise that you do not do that directly. You simply put up the love as a whole, as a unity and allow that love to fall where it may, but don't go in and think that you are able to free the cabal because they do not want that and they will see that as an attack and certainly don't send unconditional love or light to the cabal members specifically because they will see that as an attack and there can be repercussions. Anyone got something similar to that? Because I think it's really important not to yeah. tell beginners in this healing to go and do something that is potentially dangerous. So you would send the love to the unified collective of earth and humanity and allow it to fall where it will. Thank you. And I just want to re reaffirm, it's here first. You have to clear the here first. It's to yes. take responsibility yes. for our own reaction to that first. And then it to be done in unity together. Like, like you're saying, all of us holding that space of love. Thank you, Magenta. I'd like to add something to, uh, to what Magenta said. And that is in my years, Many, many years ago when I was doing hands-on psychic healing, I was working, seems like I was ordained to be doing attachment healing. And they got bigger and bigger and bigger as I did the work. And very quickly in, the, in this work, what I encountered was in my, let's say, novice time of doing that work, was that I'd find an entity and I'd send it light and it would freak out yeah. because it burned. And, you know, it would screech and cry, or I would have this negative reaction to sending life, light to this entity until I finally understood that it was programmed to believe that the light was an attack, as Magenta was saying, on the bigger picture. And I had to re-educate myself to deal with these beings in a non-aggressive way that, you know, it, who, who said that bringing the light Patricia Corey speaks, here I come, uh, was necessarily the, the, the karmically right thing to do for that being. So I trained myself to say, I invite you to go to the appropriate place for your karmic evolution. And um, there, there was no threat there. I hope that conveys what I'm trying to share in a smaller version to what Magenta and you are saying, uh, but that Atara. But that learning that, that um, the love has to honor the contract of the other, doesn't it? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, she started. You're on mute. Oh, Araya, go first. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, I just wanted to add to that because that was one of the last things that they showed me, and I think. I think Paula was going to try to have us do it after we recorded, but I guess it's supposed to be shared now. And it was exactly what you're saying, Patricia, that, and what you're saying, Magenta, that 
that what needs to happen is it's like they kind of have to be partitioned into their own little area and then they can be offered do you want to do you want to go for healing do you want to stay where you are and and it's okay but they just can't impede on the people that that want to stay in the heart and want to stay in the light so that was another piece that that i was shown so i just wanted to add that that that's they have the right to be there they want to be there i guess you know so it's getting through that net could i just drop one comment in there excuse me i want to say this before i lose the thought there's also a contract going on between that little entity and the human being who's attached to it so there's you know there's so much to honor that's what i'm saying (laughs) okay go ahead i was saying the same thing there's a net cast over them so even if they want to be free they are already trapped and you can't just wade on in i once did the same sort of thing as patricia in my early days i once sent love and light to george bush and he was absolutely horrified i mean luckily i was in a training ground and i was safe but i learned that light and love is not what they want they want the absolute opposite they're trying to shut the heart down and so there has to be different ways of freeing. You can't just go in with Archangel Michael's sword and slash the nets and free everyone. It, otherwise we could have done this thousands and thousands of years ago. There's been light workers on this planet for millennia. We've come together now because on a collective level, everything is being seen. So now everything is happening in an organic synchronistic way. And going back to um, when Araya gave a list of um, different contracts, Every single contract she said had a flowing energy about it, suggesting that that contract can be um, uh, dealt with, eased. But there was one sentence, one contract Araya said, and I felt resistance to that because, not me personally, and it's when Araya said, we don't have to go through suffering or, um, or disaster scenarios in order to wake up. But I feel we are actually in um, the dark strategy, the dark plan, and there are several disaster scenarios that are in our timeline, and they are there in order to wake us up and to bring the peace. And I think to try to create, oh, we don't want any more disasters, I absolutely agree with that, we don't. But these disasters have a ripple effect, which is leading to exposure and disclosure, like Nina was saying about people dying and the nine speak to me about individuals having the right to not know. They don't want to know the truth. They have the right to not know the truth. If they don't want to be freed, they have the right to not be freed. And those who want to be freed but are trapped, there has to be other ways that we can free them because they are controlled by those who don't want to free them. So there's multi, multi, multi layers. Um, in order to work with all of this. So with Araya's contract, the, the one suggesting we don't have to go through anything uh, that is a disaster scenario anymore to raise polarity and to awaken, I think that that is true eventually, but I'm still seeing some issues with that seeing out in the physical realm this year at least. And I think that contract is something that will be released after 2020 personally go ahead laura i feel like we, yeah uh we're, we're really learning how to manage wounds and trauma and and we're gonna keep facing events that push those buttons or create trigger events that we relive a trauma from the past just like we do in our own personal lives if we're trying to form a new relationship we might think of our ex every time somebody says something a certain way there's certain words certain triggers that all of a sudden make it feel like a PTSD response is coming back or that wound is being reopened. So all these trigger events are connecting with people's unconscious memories of former cataclysms, pandemic, you know, all these different things that have happened and the Holocaust. I mean, we've all survived incredible trauma. So to me, the lesson is cosmic and natural law naturally know how to transform things, heal things, form scar tissue, seal up wounds, Um, Our immune system knows how to handle pretty much everything if we keep feeding that immune system. So our collective unity is the immune system of the planet for these parasitic forces to go away because the root races and the cloister races were brought to this planet to repair 
The architecture of our DNA and unity consciousness is required to share those codes. So they've pit us against each other because in that fragmented state in humanity, those cracks are what they thrive on and live on. They have to keep opening up those cracks to even have a life because they wouldn't exist if we weren't feeding them. It's our trauma and our inability to figure out how to come together and say, okay, let's hold each other. Let's, 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 let's seal this wound up. Let's, 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 let's connect with the higher part of ourselves, our connection with cosmic and natural law that know exactly how to heal this wound and not allow these cracks and these trauma trigger events to keep allowing those, those, those openings because those are portals for these archonic forces. And, and they need a life cycle, which is us as louche, but it's also the AI that creates a technological um, sort of where, where it, uh, it, it's harvested our energy to the point where it can create artificial timelines because it's actually taking those cracks and what it's feeding on and putting it into these harvesting tanks to then generate these falsities and to keep everything in reversal. Because every time we're traumatized, we have a choice of having it bring us closer together or further apart. And when it brings us further apart, you know, it's, it's, it's actually creating that end game for them, which is new world order. We finally got them, we grabbed them all because we've successfully made them blame each other, hate each other, and we can just stand in the background and they'll still think we're heroes or, or we're trying to help with these false solutions. So I think we just need to master how to handle wounds because a wound can either be healed and, and strengthen us, or it can become an infection and become gangrene to the point where it has to be on an artificial life support system, which to me is what the AI is doing, that we're so infected by these viruses and these wounds and traumas without any ability to know how to handle it that literally this, this, this technology has to be a life support to constantly feed this rulership that calls us slaves because it's only enslaving us to our inability to remember ourselves. Our unconsciousness, um, if we can shine a light on it, holds everything we could possibly need to transform anything, to, to heal things instantly, to manifest at will, and, and to be in that greater circulation. The ether energy is available. This window period has been very prophesized, but for thousands of years, they've had very dark architecture in place to generate and simulate this particular timeline that's played out in movies and apocalyptic movies and all this, um, you know, subconscious sort of stuff that you know, brings about the end of the world. But it, but, but, the, but the real truth is it's the end of their world. And we're going to learn how to heal this big gaping wound we are all born into that we're all handling in our own ways. And it does require spiritual maturity to not act out, but to say, I'm hurt. I need support. And I'm not going to go to, um, you know, any other source, but the source within, because nature is encoded with everything we could possibly need to repair right here, right now. And, and this overlay and this mimicking and this AI is basically um, taking that wound in these trigger events and, and having us relive wars where they've, you know, put us in places where we're blaming each other for the wars that were created in the past, when they were behind them the whole time pulling the strings. So all the root races, you know, have learned um, to uh, create issue with each other, which keeps the junk DNA alive. But if all the root races could understand that all the diversity, all the different strands that we carry are, are the diversity of the DNA and gift that we hold within ourselves and that we're here to switch each other on, we're going to realize we love each other way more than we could ever imagine. And racism is nothing that we've ever, ever held in our true nature. And it's absolutely been taught to prevent the DNA architecture from being repaired, which is why that there's race wars. That's right. Very well said. Go ahead, Carol. Thank you. Um, yeah, a couple of things that I, I wanted to touch on there um, that Laura was saying. Um, I've had a lot of trauma in my own childhood. And the way I've healed it mostly is through forgiveness. And the forgiveness of, of the other person and then forgiveness of myself. Because I felt very... Um, very blocked because I've forgiven other people and then I, 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 I was um, kind of in a stagnating not knowing what to do next because I hadn't I, I knew I hadn't healed it and this is this is I'm, I'm wanting to share this not, not just individually but for everyone so the next stage stage for me was to then go on and actually forgive myself and that's what we knew we need to do we need to 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 forgive each other forgive ourselves forgive each other for the trauma that we've created on earth at the time at, at the moment um, and that one of the cabal's last um 
the last card that they're using is racism because they know that, that they've programmed us so much as a collective they know that they've programmed us so much as a collective with racism because we see ourselves separated from each other and we're not we're not separate at all but they've conditioned us and programmed us and dumbed us down so much to to buy into the especially the belief of racism and that we are separate from each other and that we are separate from source and that we are separate from everything that's outside of ourselves so that's one of the last cards they're playing at the moment is racism and i do there's a couple of things i wanted to mention but um i i channeled a um an article a couple of weeks ago and the pleiadians called it the last battle question mark so what's happening on earth at the moment is more is more than likely the last battle of the cabal or whatever you want to call them and they use racism they are using racism as a last card um and dividing <coughs> excuse me dividing and conquering is one of their um things that they really play on so we need to 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 do the very opposite we need to be, be united and stand together and realize that everything we're shown is a lie everything that <coughs> we're taught is a lie um our school systems our banks our um governments our pharmaceutical companies our all of it is put in place by the cabal or the negative agenda or negative et energy whatever you want to call it is are all systems are put in place and to earth including schools um to keep us enslaved to keep us as slaves and that is coming to an end now which is why we're in the last battle i believe we're in the last battle and then they've really upped their game because they've seen events with it with um i guess you would call it a looking glass mirror they've seen events where where our consciousness is raising and they're trying to squash it they're trying to stop it what they didn't foresee um when they put the COVID in, in, into the into the reality is that it would have a backlash on effect on them like a tsunami doubling back the energy would double back on them um so they didn't foresee that and the other thing that they're not capable of at all is resonating with love frequency they don't hold it in their frequency they don't understand it they don't get it they're not able to um connect with it so i think it was magenta was saying that it burns them um so i, I would agree with magenta because it, it, it would burn them you know if they're not able to um if they're not able to um it, yeah it would burn them because they're not able to operate at that frequency so it's love is the answer and i'm not talking about um a fairy willy-nilly or um a psychic woo-woo or any anything that that is out there love is love is an emotion like all other emotions and it's it's the highest emotion but it's it can be measured like all other emotions so um it really is. so it's something we can create within ourselves and it's love that will move mountains love that will move energy love that will move us through this time and it's so important now i've met several people over the last um couple of months that don't get it that don't get and i've even been quite negative come back at me in quite a negative way because they're not understanding the love frequency and the love energy and to me to, to them it's just mumbo jumbo so and they see it as being they don't see it as being something within themselves that they can create in order to move their consciousness upwards and to have a, a positive effect on themselves they see it as something that is beyond their control when actually we are well able to create that frequency because it is a frequency that is measurable 
by science. So therefore, if it's measurable by, by science, we are able to create it in ourselves. And that's what we need to do more than ever. We need to create that frequency in ourselves. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Carol. We're, we're just looking at the time here. Thank you, everyone. For oh, yeah, go ahead, Chrissy. Uh, you know, thanks everyone for sharing this amazing stuff. I haven't said much today because I feel like I'm rolling on a wave at the moment because all the events that I foresaw 10 years ago have been happening literally one by one by one. And so now I'm just fully trusting whatever's happening as a result of everything coming to fruition. And the last kind of real intense conversation I had with, if you want to call it God, source uh, was last year in August where I had a real two hour conversation and what really came out was uh, I was asking about the suffering on the planet and I said is this merry-go-round ever going to end is there ever going to be respite for these people that are truly suffering like I count myself lucky that I've been allowed to experience awakening and 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 therefore get into the eye of the storm and i feel really blessed for that but i also at the same time really understand how many people are truly truly so caught up in the drama that the suffering is just it's just unimaginable and um and what i was really told again and i'm i've started to fully trust these um these these sessions when they happen very rarely is that I was really told this suffering is coming to an end and it's coming to an end very, very soon. So I just wanted to add that to what you were saying, Carol. Um, and I really fully trust it. And I'm, I, I just have to say, I'm excited about what's happening because I saw all this happening and the only outcome was um, a 5D outcome. And in the 5D, the energies that are not um, resonating with the love frequency they just cannot exist in that dimension it's just impossible it's just not yeah so um, that's what I wanted to say and I just wanted to add one thing as well for people watching this that they can still send their own roundtable sessions to the address that will be mentioned um, in the description under the video together with the channel the roundtable channel that we've created because at this moment in time, it's just so welcome for everyone to come together and, and record their sessions to share with everyone. Because the more we share, the more we create that flower of life that is uh, everyone connecting to the other. And that's what's raising the frequency to the point of going again beyond the limiting boundaries of any matrix that's still in place. So that's what I want to add. And I really want to thank everyone for coming today. Um, I'll be going offline very soon because there's a little boy sort of screaming here in the, in the hallway. Thank you. Thank you, Chrissy. Can I just add as well to everyone watching, we have a Divine Feminine Roundtable Facebook group. Maybe not everybody's on Facebook, you know, good reasons for avoiding it. However, it's a great place for us to connect. And it's a place for everyone to build the community and connect with other like-minded hearts and souls, male, female, black, white, whatever human beings coming together. The Divine Feminine Roundtable Facebook group just put that in the search. But also there's a Divine Masculine Roundtable that has started as well. So I don't know what's going on with their videos and their group, but that's, that's out there. So I just want everyone to, to know that. Thank you. And I think this would be a wonderful place with, with that last mention that we have already done the work. The light will win, of course. There is so much hope, we just have to walk through it, that's all. And there's so many of us that we can hold hands together to walk through this together so that we can be well. So if you guys are all cool, I'm gonna stop the recording now. And again, thank you all so much for coming. <laughs>